Hello everyone, I'm Dimitri with Hardware Canucks and we hope you enjoyed that pre-roll. <laughs> Give us a like if you did and let us know if you want to see more similar things down the pipeline in the future. But let's get on with the review because this is one kick-ass gaming machine incorporating some amazing hardware to play your games. This is the first notebook that we review incorporating a G-Sync panel. I'm very excited to share my experience with uh, gaming on G-Sync on mobile. It has some very unique uh, physical character uh, like all the ASUS no notebooks do. So without any further ado, let's, uh, let's get into it. This is going to be a good one. So you're looking at the ASUS G751, our model shipped with an i7-4720HQ with turbo up to 3.6GHz, 24GB of RAM, a GTX 980M with 4GB of VRAM, a 256GB PCIe SSD and a 1TB 7200RPM drive. So this thing is fully decked out for gaming, but are you the type of person who is either willing or able to spend $2500 or $3000 on a laptop and that would be the main deciding factor if the G751 sells or not. It features top-of-the-line Maxwell M GPU and with added G-Sync so you can finally play without tearing, lag or stutter on a notebook. The display is 17.3 inches with 1920 by 1080p resolution that looks fantastic and I initially thought it was a high-res display just because of how crisp everything looked, but why not a 3K display for this size and price? It is an IPS panel though with outstanding colors, wide viewing angles and because of G-Sync it is a 75Hz panel instead of the normal 60Hz that we get on non-G-Sync notebooks. The slight refresh upgrade sounds minor but is definitely noticeable with extra response times for games. It is one of those things that once you try it'll be difficult to go back because tearing in games is now eliminated and things just feel so much smoother when you let the display refresh match the GPU frame output. And so the ASUS G751 is a desktop replacement, no doubt about that. The combination of rubberized matte surface and brushed aluminum adds a certain gaming visual element but without going over the top and I still think the machine looks gorgeous with the red illuminated logo on the lid, the red accented vents at the back and the beautiful red backlight on the keyboard. The sheer size and weight of this thing would make any gamer on the go really unhappy with themselves of carrying 8.4 pounds on their back. And in size comparison to this Eurocom M5 Pro, you can see just how thick the G751 is. But I'm not saying it's a bad thing, in fact the opposite. I'm tired of seeing terrible cooling and extremely loud operation with really thin notebooks. So ASUS takes this to the next level of giving us the best notebook cooling on the market that is also the quietest, which is possible with the added thickness of the chassis. Aside from the ventilation and the ROG logo at the back, all the ports are located on the sides. On the left side we find the Kensington lock, two USB 3.0, a Blu-ray drive, which I am surprised to see, but there is no reason why it shouldn't be included. And finally, an SD card reader. On the other side, we find the power input, VGA out, Gigabit Ethernet, HDMI 2.0, a Thunderbolt port so you can daisy chain a bunch of things, drives, monitors, whatever you decide. And then there are two more USB 3 ports and finally the audio jacks. Opening the lid, the notifications and activity LEDs are right in front of the trackpad, visible when necessary but nicely discreet with caps lock LED on the actual key, very much appreciated. And the keyboard is one of the best notebook keyboards that I've typed and gamed on. The smooth rubberized surface is pleasant, it hides the handling marks pretty well and seriously the added thickness of the chassis leaves room for proper travel distance for the keys with satisfying smooth and light 
actuations with immediate rebounds. The elevated rear portion of the notebook sets a comfortable angle, so there are no irritating edges. And I also like the addition of illumination for the WASD keys, so they stand out a bit. And the spacebar on the left side is extended, giving your thumb larger surface area to press. I was surprised to not see any media keys, aside from changing the volume, uh, just because ASUS could have incorporated these into the numpad. However, there are a few unique keys in the top left corner, starting with three macro keys that you can assign to do whatever you want. There's a dedicated Steam key, uh, shows that this is a truly a gaming machine. And then there's a dedicated streaming key that launches XSplit. And if you stream, you'd be happy to know that an unlimited recording license is included with a notebook, which is usually a $10 monthly subscription. So you can utilize the 1.2 megapixel webcam while gaming. The trackpad is well placed. It's got a large tracking surface with excellent individual left and right clicks that are light enough to press without needing to readjust your hand. And the surface is smooth for comfortable navigation. Uh, nothing negative to say here, although I wish it was glass for the price of this machine. I was pleasantly satisfied with the speakers on the G751 as well. Excellent bass response and overall full sound reproduction. Let's take a listen. When it comes down to the upgrade potential, removing the plate underneath reveals the 2.5 inch drive and the PCIe SSD right beside it, where a second 2.5 inch drive can be installed, but only if the PCIe SSD is removed because they sort of overlap each other. And lastly, our RAM slots, a total of four, two of which are on the other side of the motherboard and are inaccessible from this location. But with 24 gigabytes installed, you should be okay. And I love that this cover is removable with just a single screw to help upgrading your drives or the RAM, if it comes down to it, much easier. And finally, let's talk performance. We compared the ASUS G751 to the Eurocom M5 Pro that has a 970M, to the Gigabyte P35K V3 with a 965M, and the new Razer Blade Pro that has a 960M. And we have all individual reviews of those notebooks as well, so make sure to check that out. But man, the GTX 980M just eats through demanding games with very impressive averages for enjoyable gaming and really high minimums too, uh, compared to the 970M, the 965M and the 960M. And for a mobile GPU, this is an absolute powerhouse. And so this is what the machine sounds like after four hours of gaming. I've literally just sat down, started playing for four hours uh, and the, you can hear the fans start to spin up a little bit from the totally silent operation, but Check this out. It sounds almost absolutely silent. The birds outside my window are louder than this machine at load, which means the cooling system on this machine is very good with comfortable noise levels, even at load. Um, if you put your ear to the back of the machine, you can hear the fans and you can feel the hot air coming out. But from the very front, uh, absolutely silent. So let me move the microphone around so you can hear what uh, the exhaust sounds like. Very quiet indeed, very quiet. Which brings us to temperatures. And not only are the idle temps impressive considering the CPU on all of these notebooks is the same, but the load temperatures on both the CPU and the GPU remain below 80 C with such a quiet fan noise. I was also impressed at the battery life with its 88 watt hour 8 cell battery lasting me 2 hours and 43 minutes in our standardized browser usage scenario. And so here is the bottom line for the ASUS G751. It's heavy and bulky for a reason, to allow the cooling system to do its job without sounding like a jet engine. 
and yes you do sacrifice the portability factor but this being a desktop replacement you wouldn't want it any other way. And this truly feels like a Republic of Gamers product designed to deliver the performance we would expect for today's games and now would add a G-Sync 75Hz display to eliminate tearing and stuttering. And from now on, it will be difficult for me to game on a non-G-Sync mobile machine just because G-Sync smooths out your gameplay and things in their mid-40s feel like they're in their 60s and that's uh, it's, it's a good th thing to experience. Things are more fluid. Um, but what is this machine and who is it for? If you have the means and the funds to afford $2,500 to $3,000 depending on the model, then yes. However, of course you could make the argument that with that much money you could allocate that funds to building yourself a kick-ass gaming machine as well. However, keep in mind that nothing would be able to match the portability factor and the all-inclusiveness factor of this because this is of course a G-Sync monitor sort of built into a notebook excellent keyboard trackpad and so it encompasses the entire sphere all the elements are done right and therefore you are buying into that uh, totally inclusive experience uh, not just for gaming but as a desktop replacement in general and that's why we're giving it the Harbor Canucks damn good award so this concludes this review, we want it to be thorough, so give us a like if you want to see more G-Sync notebook reviews in the future, and make sure to subscribe if you have, because we have a lot of cool things coming very soon, and we'll see you in the next one. Hello my friends, this is FPS Russia. Wait a second, wrong video, wrong video. Not a fake accent though, not a fake accent. Hello my friends, this is Dimitri with Hyra Canucks, and this is one kick-ass gaming machine.